Okay, Ezekiel chapter 14. Now we're going to look at the key words of this chapter. Because there are key words. Because there's a religion out there that have aids to worship idolatry. Now we're looking at the nation of Israel. But there's one thing, to, I mean, we're not under the law, but the law shows us what God's attitude is. And there's one thing we see from Genesis to Revelation. God is against idols. Then came the elders of Israel unto me. These are the heads of the tribes, the, the elder people, and sat before me. So they come in into Ezekiel's house, room, wherever he is, and they sit down. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So these men come in, and God says to Ezekiel, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. So these elders, the, the clan of the Hebrew people, the ones that would be wisdom and knowledge, and a help to the people have idols in their heart. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity. That's a key word associated with idolatry. Before their face. Should I, God, be inquired of all, at all by them? Am I going to pay attention to them? Am I going to have to give answer to them? They're sinning. They got iniquity. They got a stumbling block. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Jehovah, Every man of the house of Israel that set us up idols in his heart, which these men have done it, but every man, not just the idol, not just the, the elders. Every man. Every Jewish man, every Hebrew man. And put us a stumbling block again of his iniquity, repeated, before his faith, cometh to the prophet. Now, Ezekiel is a prophet, but we need to read more. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So, in the violation of the sin of the idols, God, Jehovah, I'll answer you. But I'll answer you according to the idols. You want to have that star? I'll answer you according to that star. That star's not correct. Baal? He ain't correct, but I'll answer you to Baal. I will give you the doctrine of Baal, if that's the God you want. I'll give you the doctrine of Esther, Baptist Church, if that's what you want. And they'll teach you, and they'll guide you. Wrong. We'll see that in a moment. That I may, God may, take the house of Israel in their own heart. Because they are all estranged from me, God, through their idols. In other words, all they that have the idols are estranged. They're far from me, God. Well, what's that say about people in idolatry? They're not with God, but they believe they are of God. Well, that's God answering them. According to their idols, or according to their gods and their goddesses, oh, we're doing right. God sits back and says, oh, no, you're not. You've got iniquity, you've got a stomach block, you sting. I don't approve of it. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, 
And so he says, first say to the elders, now say to the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Jehovah, repent. Why would God say repent if it wasn't wrong? And turn yourselves from your idols. That's what repent means. God has given us the word repent in the definition. Turn away. Repenting is turning away from your sin. And idols are a sin. What do you do for the Catholic Church? Aids to worship is a sin. But the church teaches it's okay, it's right, it's proper. And the people listen, and the people hear, and the people agree. Though it's wrong, though the scriptures say it's wrong. The people say, the church says, the hierarchy says, it's right. And they're wrong, and God's right. And their traditions are a sin. Turn your away your faces from all your abominations. That's what God calls it. And that's not the first time God calls idols abominations. For every one of the house of Israel... Okay, well, we're talking about the, the house of Israel. Or of the stranger, there's the Gentiles, that sojourneth in Israel. The, the Gentiles that are living in the land of Israel, you too. If you got idols, you're a sinner. You're an abomination. You need to repent. So don't go read it. Oh, it's the Old Testament. It's for the Jews. It's for the. No, what about the stranger? Which separates himself from me and set up his idols in his heart and put as a stumbling block, third time, of his iniquity, third time, before his face. And cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. Well, we got this thing that's an abomination, we got this thing as an iniquity, and we're going to come to God. That's what the Baptist Church does. They are involved of the sins of Esther and the sins of Tammuz of Easter and Christmas. And then they come to God. We want an answer. Well, how's God going to answer them? I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. Ooh. God says, I'll deal with you. I'll deal with your sin. I'll give you an answer. I will set my face against that man. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, Jeremiah chapter 10. I'm against you. We'll have eggs for the little kitties. I'm against you. We'll even have trunk or treat. I'm against that, says God. I will make him a sign and a proverb. I will cut him off from the midst of my people, Israel. But well, isn't the Christian God's people? And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 8. That is number 17 on our list. What is number 17 that you shall know? I am the, I'm going to cut you off with your idols. You're going to be a mockery. You're going to be a proverb. You're going to be a taunt in Israel. For the Christian, you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to lose rewards. You're going to lose gold, silver, and precious stones. And your wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn. Your plastic is going to melt. Of your idols. And you'll know that the Lord is the Lord all eternity when you have lost. And if the prophet be deceived. 
So here's a false prophet. When he has spoken a thing. Now here's a scary worse. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. The Lord has deceived the priests in the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. The priests, I mean, the, the Lord has deceived the hierarchy of the Mormon Church. The Lord has deceived the workers of religion. Why are there so many religions? Why doesn't God get rid of the religions? Because God's going to give man what he wants. God will give them the witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they reject it for something else, what they want, God said, okay, I'll give it to you. That's a scary thing. Because God will give you the truth, and when you reject the truth, you got a lie, you are being deceived, and God said, okay, go ahead. And I'll deal with you at judgment. I'll deal with you at the judgment seat of Christ. I'll judge you, I'll deal with you at the great white throne judgment. And you'll be found wrong and you'll lose something. You see, Catholics want what the Catholic Church gives. You don't, you don't want to be a Catholic? The Mormons will give you what the Mormons will give you. Atheism will give you what the atheists will give you. Evolution will give you what, what you want of evolution. You want to believe you come from a monkey? You want to believe it comes from the Big Bang? You'll stand before God one day. Oh, I was wrong. Well, the Bible's right. An atheist, one day will stand before God. The Bible says, uh, prepare to meet thy God. Oh, God is for real. Too late. And we run into, thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Too late. There are going to be people that realize that the King James Bible is the Bible when they held the modern Bible and be too, oh, okay, I was wrong. All the writers of the modern Bibles, the false prophets out of Alexandria, false prophet, God said, okay, God, go ahead and write that. Go ahead and mess with my word. Even though my word said don't add or subtract, go ahead, do it. I'll deal with you. That's why there's so many religions. God will give a man what he wants. You want a worldwide leader that's going to give you all the answers, all the problems will be solved, and the peace and all that? Okay. In time, God said, here's your Antichrist. You wanted him. You got him. Now, he'll drag you to hell. You want your cars, you want your business, what you got, what, you know, whatever your, your plastic, wood, metal, and all, you, you, that's what you want? Okay. My word says, you want to go against my word? I'll deal with you. I'll deal with you. The prophet that be to see when, the, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people. And, hey, you want that guy to give you nice, fancy, great words like that? I'll destroy him and I'll destroy you. You had the truth. You don't want to believe the truth. You rather breathe a lot. When, when your pastor gives you the, the, the what idols and all that, okay, fine. Believe your pastor. When he's wrong, God will deal with you. And God would deal with him. What's, what saith the Lord in the word of God? Don't be mad at me. I'm telling you, I'm for telling you the truth what the Bible says. Don't be mad at me. This is what the Bible says. And they shall bear the punishment. Now we're talking about idolatry. We're talking about idols. And look at the words we got. It's wrong. But there's a religion out there, and religions, they have idols. India has full of idols. If you don't want the Mary and the men statues, you can go for the elephants and all those statues in India. Did God stop 
Aaron for making the golden cow. No, he didn't. And they had just been warned by the word, the voice of God, thou shalt make no idol, thou shalt make no representation, no similitude. Moses, get down there. They sinned. God could have sent fire and destroyed Aaron before he made that. And Aaron made it. God didn't stop it. And people will think, well, God didn't stop me. <laughs> yeah, God's going to stop you. The judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. What is to stop you is to read the word of God and adhere to the word of God and what God says. God says it's wrong. Tradition, teachings, okay? That's a prophet. And he's wrong. God will deal with both. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seek his unto him. Hey, the man that teaches, okay, go ahead, have idols. It's going to get the same punishment. The man says, okay, I want my idols. The same one that teaches tradition over the word. Okay, the one that wants the traditions and the one that came up with the traditions. Again, what saith the Lord? What saith the word of God? It's wrong, okay, and it's wrong. Do what's right. Uh -uh, I don't want to do that. Okay. Because you're not under God the Father no more when you do wrong. You're under Satan. Satan's the liar. He'll continue to lie to you. If that's the lie you want. Just because it's happening doesn't mean, you know, that God's going to stop it. He'll stop it. At judgment. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me. That's the millennium. Need to be polluted. We got today, we, uh, we got this big, I forget what the name was, but this big, you know, meetings of the nations and, and global warming and, and pollution and, and you know we got to cut emissions and you know the waters are going to come up over the beaches and, and kill all the people and, and, and the, the ice packs are melting in the north and the south and, and just we, 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 we got to take care of all the pollution God says idols are a pollution why ain't you taking care of them well, we don't want to offend anybody. We got to respect people's religions. Neither be polluted anymore with their transgressions. Look at the words. Look at the words. Read the words. Pope, bishops, priests. But that they may be my people, Israel, and we are. God's people as Christians. I may be their God. Save the Lord God. Now they're not, God is not their God if they got the idols. God said, hey, you want the idols? I'm not for you. I'm against you. And the one thing Israel will be truly towards God, Jehovah, I mean, when God is their God and they got rid of all the sins, iniquities, pollution, transgression. That's to get rid of the idols. 